There was once a guy living in our neighborhood named Jimmy. He got picked on a lot for being com being a confident and funny guy. His mouth tended to get him into a lot of trouble and he seldom learned his lesson. He was just very content with who he was and refused to change it. When people asked him why he let them well on him for his blunt comedy and wisecracks, he'd smirk and say, honestly it's the best policy. At least they're not hiding anything from me and neither am I from them. One of the kids he had inadvertently pissed off with a rather crude, mil crude MILF joke was something of a psychopath with a sadistic streak who didn't take kindly to the insult. So he rounded up the other guys who didn't like Jimmy and they cornered him after school in the science room. Your mouth got you into this, I want you to remember that. Brett, the ringleader, told him as he looked into Jimmy's terrified eyes. They grabbed some formic acid stored in the lab and threw it in into his face. They stood around watching him scream in agony as it ate through his flesh before laughing and running out, pretending to be concerned and wanting help for him. When the paramedics arrived and were attending to Jimmy, who was no longer able to scream, the principal asked the boys if they knew what had happened. The leader Brett explained that they were walking past when they saw Jimmy skulking around the lab room. By the time they got in there, he was already in that state. The other members joined in and backed Brett up with other fake details as Jimmy tried to protest in silent agony. The principal nodded and told him he would speak to them after he had a word with Jimmy and got in his side of the story after he was out of the hospital. A few days passed and Jimmy was kept in the ICU with bandages on his face. The doctor salvaging what little they could of his face, his vision still intact in one eye and his jaw was standing despite the loss of flesh. He was still un unable to speak and refused to respond to anyone. He just sat there, eyes unblinking and staring at the ceiling, bloodshot and filled with animosity. When he was discharged some time later, he would not respond to anyone with un anything other than the words liars. His social life gone, unable to smile or even crack a joke anymore, he secluded himself in the room, in his room and began planning. Sick vindictive thoughts started appearing in his mind. He would get them all one by one, decimate them, slice them, burn them. He waited patiently until the group would be vulnerable, late at night when they said their goodbyes and went home separately. That's when he would strike. That weekend, Brett received a package in the mail. Curiously, he opened it to find a VHS tape with the words, For you, etched cruelly onto the front. He put it in and played it. It was a crudely recorded home video by an unknown cameraman who didn't speak at all for the duration of the film. It began with a camera pointed at the date on the newspaper. It was yesterday. As he zoomed out, you could see it was in a basement, a, light, a single light flickering, hanging above and casting an uncomfortable scene. By the time he had completely zoomed out, it was apparent this was no normal video. In front of the cameraman and on his hands and knees was one of Brett's friends. He was naked, a dirty blindfold around his face and a crude gag in his mouth. He was covered in blood, horrific burns, lacerations and wounds. One particularly large one on his back stood out that almost looked like a word. The cameraman with gloved hands took out the gag of the crying boy's mouth and immediately he begged to go home. Please, please let me go man. I, I did what you wanted. Oh God, Jesse, my Keith. You made me fucking butcher them. I just want to go home man, please, I'm sorry guys. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Just keep repeating it over and over, rocking back and forth as he did so. Brett's legs began to shake as he felt the bile rising in his stomach. He could see the burned mangled bodies in the background, the bodies of his friends. All of them have markings of, uh, on their body and deep large cuts. The cameraman reached out for the boy's chin and lifted it up, encouraging him to stand. He did so obediently as he slowly led to a door off screen, whimpering. Brett can see what's been cut into his friend's back now. It's the word liar. The camera cuts out temporarily. When it restarts again, they're no longer out inside. They're instead out in the cold snow on the outskirts of the woods and it doesn't appear to be the original man holding the camera anymore. It's Brett's friend. He's whimpering and shivering as he holds the camera in one place for 30 seconds, pointing at some trees in the distance, hearing footsteps draw even nearer. Where are you, man? You, you said I could go. You said I could go. The boy is screaming and crying, frightening out of his mind, as the sound of the crunching snow draws nearer from seemingly every angle. It stops. 
He turns around to see the mingled face of Jimmy. A horrifying howl blares through the speakers and the word liars appears before the tape abruptly stops. Brett feels faint and starts to lock the front door, knowing what was coming. As he turns to run for it, he immediately hits something and falls backwards. The last things he ever hears is liars as acid runs down his face and begins to slowly eat away at his flesh. The last thing he ever sees is Jimmy's face, contorting into a sick twisted smile. Sadistic doctor, my sick shit knocks you and prop.